Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here. Uh, welcome back to the Reaper tutorial series. Uh, we've been talking about how to use the basics of Reaper, and now we're getting a little bit technical and a bit funky. So today is all about talking to Reaper remotely using things like dedicated control surfaces, uh, iPhones, iPads, even separate laptops. There's so much you can do to work with this as a remote unit. So today we're going to check that out. So first, uh, remote control surfaces, like you see those flying faders, that kind of thing. I'm not going to talk about them too much because that's the kind of thing that I don't tend to use. Uh, if you've got something like a, a Mackie a control unit or something like one of the old uh, MRDO or Pro Tools uh, flying fader things that uses the HUI protocol, uh, then Reaper will work with those. And there's a very simple way of setting that up. We go to Options and Preferences. And this is where we're going to spend a lot of our time today is at the very bottom of these settings, there is a button that's Control OSC Web. Now this starts out blank because we're not being controlled externally by anything, uh, which then gives you the choice to tell it exactly what you want to do. If I click the Add button, that comes up with this with Control Surface Mode, and we get to choose what type of control we're going to use. So quickly, the Behringer BCF is the Behringer fader unit. You literally just select that. It's uh, got MIDI in and output, which quite often come up as USB MIDI in and out. You choose them and you hit OK. And that will then work and control your tracks. Uh, same with the Frontier Alpha track. You choose the MIDI. Uh, the HUI, which is the Pro Tools control old standard. Uh, then there's the Mackie Control Universal, uh, which has MIDI input and output. And if you've got several of them, you can then choose the Mackie Control Extender for the rest of them. Uh, I know things like the uh, Tascam US 2400, which is something I wanted for a long time when I was younger. That's got 24 faders. So that's eight faders for the Universal, then two separate Mackie Control Extenders, all kind of tied together into one big unit. And they're pretty funky, and you just choose which, uh, same with the PreSonus fader port, you choose which MIDI channels it's working on. Even if you've got an old Yamaha 01X that you're using as a surface for those kind of MIDI controls for volume, that kind of thing, you just choose those MIDI inputs and outputs, hit OK and go into the uh, main window of Reaper, and you should be pretty much good to go. You change banks on your faders for the first eight tracks, the next eight tracks, the next eight tracks, and that's nice and simple and that's done. However, I find, personally, I think that's a little bit outdated and is quite restrictive. Whereas what I do is a little bit more modern and this is where we get into it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about now is OSC, Open Sound Control. OSC, is in the control world, the thing that's replacing MIDI. Uh, MIDI is still useful for things like keyboards and virtual drums, that kind of thing. OSC is kind of the future for control surfaces because it can do loads and loads of different messages all at once. So you can be tweaking things so they don't get in each other's way. It's easier to program. Uh, you can send all sorts of stuff like VU meters, track names, all sorts of stuff with minimal headache in terms of trying to make specific implementations like all those different things I mentioned before with the different MIDI for different devices and different setups. With OSC that's all gone, you can just make that nice and easy. So for OSC, you have one device that is listening, which in this case is Reaper, and you have one device that's being controlled. And in this case, I'm going to use my iPad. And there's an app that I use. I'm going to get the screen recording going here. There's an app that I use called Touch OSC. Ah, Touch OSC. So the first thing we need to do 
is set this up. So if we go mode. So the first thing we have to do is have a device name. So in this case, I'm just going to call it iPad. If I change the mode to configure device IP and local port, then I get to see uh, all the different port numbers and the IPs. And all this is, the IP is basically like a phone number. So the iPad has one, The anything that's connected to a network has an IP address. And what we need to do, if I click the OSC on the iPad, is I need to make sure that the numbers here line up with the numbers here. So I'm gonna change the device port, which is usually 9,000 by default to 9,005, and the local port to 8,005 just because that's the same as what I've got on this iPad. If you've got, if you want to change it on here instead, you can do. So the local IP address on here is what we want to put in device IP. So we're going to literally copy this down. 192.168.0.37. And the local IP here is what we need to change here, which is point not point uh, two, seven. Now, if you're on a network where you can set static IPs, you only have to do this once and then you can set that so that that's now working. Cause I know this is a bit of a messing about, but if I hit okay, we can now hit listen. And then if we hit done here, I can press buttons on the iPad in touch OSC and we can see that all coming up in the listen which means I know it's working at least going that way, which if all the connections are right, means it should all work going this way. So if I, what we want to do now is go back into the settings here and change the layout because there are different layouts. And the one that I tend to like with Reaper and iPads is a, a layout called Logic Pad, which also works with Logic, funnily enough, whereas Logic Touch is the one that you probably want to use with a phone because it's got a much smaller screen. So that's specific to touch OS, but if I hit OK, and did you notice when I hit OK, all the settings on here suddenly updated. It gave me all the track names, all the relative volumes. If I hit OK and go out of this, I can now hit play on here. I can now switch banks of tracks and it tells me exactly what they're all called, which is really useful. Uh, I can change the relative volumes of everything. As we can see, if I bring up the mixer window in Reaper, you can see as I move something on this screen here, it moves it there as well. So we can solo tracks. We can change our window at the top. There's a lot of tabs where I can change the pans of everything, the send volumes. I can change all sorts of effect parameters. And so there's quite a lot of control that I have. I can record, I can put a metronome on. As you can hear in this instance, the metronome isn't exactly in time, but that's because we didn't record to a metronome in the first place. And so all of that control on here is really, really powerful. If I now want to add my phone in to do a very similar thing, I can also add another OSC device. Let's call this one phone. This also works. There is a touch OSC app for Android as well. So it's not just iOS specific. If I want the pattern configuration to be logic touch and then change the mode to configure local ID and local port, uh, something that you have to be aware of, if you want to use more than one uh, device via OSC, they have to be on different ports. And the reason they're on different ports is then they don't get the wires crossed and try and send the same information to, to the wrong device. It just makes life a lot easier for the OSC on the computer. So if I bring up touch OSC on here, I'm just going to get the screen recording on here. So that's now if I close the listen window, because the listen window makes sure that nothing happens, but we can see it on screen. I can now change all my different setups on my phone, which is much more useful if I'm say in the drum room and I don't want to be messing out about with an iPad. I have a much smaller version of the control. And as I press buttons on the phone, we can see it all update on the iPad as well because all that data is being fired across the network. Nice and easy.
Now, OSC is cool and all, and it's what I used for years, but now there's something even more clever. And that thing is that there is now a web-based interface that Reaper provides itself. And this means that that's compatible with pretty much anything that can have a browser. So tablets, um, laptops, phones, you don't have to be bothered about buying separate apps. You can have Reaper do a lot of this on its own and you can get very, very clever very quickly. So if we go back to preferences and control, let's now delete those OSC things and we'll add in a web browser interface. Now, so if we run web server on port 8080, uh, you can add in a username and password. So I'm just gonna call it derp with the password derp because it's always good to have some kind of password. And then there are different interfaces that you can use. The ones that I use generally are called index.html, which is the standard one, which is really nice. And then more me, which we'll talk about in a minute. So where there's this access URL at the bottom, that's where you want to be going. If I was to open on my iPad, say, let's get the video recording again. So if I was to go to Chrome on here, I could put that absolutely disgusting set of uh, numbers in here and that would work. Although let's not do that. Let's take this little box called userc.reaper.fm and in ID, we'll give it a name. So let's call it Hop Pole because that's our studio name here and hit apply settings. And there we go. So that's made a web address that we can go to that's much easier to read. So if I go to HTTP colon slash slash RC dot Reaper dot FM slash hop pole and go on the iPad. This should come up redirecting success. So if we click on that link, it's going to ask me for a password. Of course it is because we put one in. So the username's a derp and the password is derp. Although again, you put in what you like. And now that's done. So we've got our control surface at the top with stop play, nice big record button. And we've got lots of different controls further down for separate tracks. Ooh. So I've got every track here, monitoring available, record arming. There is a mode and it might be a different browser that I need where it suddenly does everything really nice and uh, shiny. If you do it on a laptop, you get a much nicer version of the interface. If I rotate the screen, it rotates and adjusts accordingly. If you do this on a laptop, you also get a more fancy kind of thing. Now, if I was to change the default interface to more me.html, now if I refresh, I suddenly get an option to select my monitor track, which is something that's uh, not very useful in this situation because we've not set our Reaper project up to accommodate that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly use a project that's up on this machine. Okay, so this setup that's behind me is my usual big studio template that I've made, which I will make available as a Reaper project in the description below. It may not be perfectly appropriate to what you do. Uh, you may need to tweak it quite a lot because it's quite a personal setup. But the idea is that there are four tracks for headphones, one, two, three, and four, and all the main groups go to it. And once that's been set up in the more me, if I look at the iPad screen here, where it says select your monitor track. If I click that and select, I don't know, headphone one, that means that I get a choice, all the kick, snare, hats, everything. I can change the levels just for that headphone mix, which means if I'm in that other room there in the control room, I'm a drum kit or if I'm in there with the band, we don't then have to ask engineers to change all the mix. You can just lean over and change it for your own mix and not affect everybody else. It does take quite a lot of setting up to do that, but the fact that it's available there and it's even color coded based on the tracks that I've got behind me is really quite useful. It's quite pretty as well, but it's more than, more than anything incredibly functional and it really, really helps. So there you have it. I'm opening this in Chrome 
which means I could do that on a laptop. I could do that anywhere else in the building. So I could do remote control by having the bulk of the processing done by a big computer in a control room and then control it live from somewhere else. So I could even give a copy of this Say if we were doing a live broadcast, I could give one of these with a separate live feed mix control to an engineer that's listening to a live feed mix if they then want to do more or less of any particular element of a mix and not affect what I'm doing, for example. There are so many possibilities that you can do with this and it's really, really useful for me and hopefully there's something in it for you as well. Uh, so you can also do that with the master mix with the the index.html that we were saying there's so much and you can run them all concurrently as well so i could have a separate mix on one have a web interface for the other guys and that all works in harmony and doesn't seem to do much in terms of processor usage either it really doesn't seem to har harm it hopefully this has been useful for you hope you've appreciated the uh, wizardry that goes into this kind of thing because the guys that make reaper really are doing some clever stuff with some big strides here and I really appreciate it, and I hope that you appreciate us uh, bringing it to you. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about backing everything up, and not just, like, save your work, but Reaper itself has quite a few clever little uh, tricks and tools in it to make sure that if everything goes horribly wrong, you are absolutely covered, even before you've finished a project and copied a backup to any separate files. So stick around for that, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Support us on Patreon. See you later. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos, as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.